my dear students in this video we shall discuss static memory allocation and dynamic memory allocation the best example for static memory allocation is arrays and the best example for dynamic memory allocation is linked list yes array is the best example for static memory allocation let us store 10 20 30 40 in an array and you can just see 10 20 30 40 are integers therefore you require an integer array let us declare an integer array yes the name of the array is a it can store four integers so how many bytes are required for a see a can store four elements and each element is of the type integer therefore eight bytes are required for a eight memory locations have to be allocated for a i'll consider a small chunk of memory here yes these are the eight uh, memory locations yes now randomly allocated by the operating system okay why 1 2 3 4 only was allocated for a simply randomly operating system will allocate the memory here now these are the two memory locations allocated for a of 0 yes for a of 1 for a of 2 and for a of 3 now all the eight memory locations allocated for your array a are continuous you can just observe they are all continuous from 1 2 3 4 to 1 2 4 1 so in static memory allocation the memory allocated should be continuous physically now let us store 10 20 30 40 yes 10 is stored in f0 20 is stored in f1 30 is stored in f2 40 is stored in f3 very simple totally 8 bytes are allocated to array a 8 continuous memory locations 8 bytes 8 continuous bytes memory allocated should be continuous in static memory allocation you have seen this here 8 bytes 8 continuous bytes were allocated for a so in static memory allocation memory has to be continuous now let us go to dynamic memory allocation linked list is the best example for dynamic memory allocation let us store 10 20 30 and 40 in a single linked list the same four numbers we will store in a single linked list see here what i will do is i will consider some chunks of memory at different parts of the memory so these are four memory locations at 2468 2469 2470 and 2471 yes these are four memory locations at 6789 6790 6791 and 6792 some other part of memory again i'll take four memory locations at 1234 1235 1236 and 1237 again different part of memory yes another four memory locations i will take 3456 3457 3458 and 3459 see i have taken i have taken four chunks of memory from different parts of the memory are they continuous they are not continuous all the four chunks belong to different parts of the memory now let us store 10 in one of the chunks yes 10 is stored at 2468 2469 that is 2468 20 20 is stored at 1234 30 is stored at 6789 40 is stored at 3456 now we have stored four numbers in four different chunks of memory now carefully see here 10 20 30 40 are they physically adjacent no they are not physically adjacent they are stored in different parts of the memory yes 10 20 30 40 are stored in different parts of the memory are they logically connected no they are not logically connected also now we shall build a logical connection between these numbers 10 20 30 40 how what i will do is along with the 10 I will store the address of 20. So what is the address of 20? 1, 2, 3, 4. So along with 10, we will store 1, 2, 3, 4. See, carefully understand. Not only 10 is stored, along with 10, the address of the next number. Because we wanted the next number as 20. Along with 10, the address of 20, 1, 2, 3, 4 is stored. So along with 20, we have to store the address of the next number, 30. What is the address of 30? 6, 7, 8, 9. So along with 20, we have to store 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes. Very good. Now 30. Along with 30, we have to store the address of the next number 40. So what is the address of 40? 3, 4, 5, 6. Therefore, 3, 4, 5, 6 is stored along with 30. Now 40. 40 is the last number. After 40, we don't have any other number. Therefore, 
we write minus 1 because there is no address, negative address means it is null. We do, that is the end, that is the end. Now, we will represent using the linked list uh, forum. Yes, 10, 20, 30 and 40. You may just remember the treasure hunt game. I think in uh, video 3, I have discussed a treasure hunt game and simply linked list. It is almost like this. This analogy goes like this. After 10, we have the address of 20. At 20, we have the address of 30. At 30, we have the address of 40. At 40, we signal the end. It's just like treasure hunt game. Now, carefully understand here, totally 16 bytes are located to this list because 8 bytes are located for the numbers and 8 more bytes are required for the pointers. See, we not only store 10, we also store the address of the next number. Therefore, not only 2 bytes are required for 10, we also require another 2 bytes to store the address of the next uh, number. So, 4 bytes for one number, like that 4 numbers means it is 16 bytes. So, totally 16 bytes are located for the singly linked list. And as you see here, memory allocated is not continuous in dynamic, dynamic memory allocation. Yes, it is demonstrated here. They are not continuous. Memory locations are not continuous. Remember this, the linked list we write, but physically the linked list will be like this. Please remember this, how actually physically it happens, that is very important. Next, let us go to the comparison between static memory allocation and dynamic memory allocation. Best example for static memory allocation is arrays. Whereas the best example for dynamic memory allocation is linked list. Now, in case of static memory allocation, memory is allocated during the compilation, meaning before the execution of the program. So, memory is allocated before the execution of the program. Hence, the program will execute fast. Hence, fast. Because the memory is already allocated before the execution. So, during the execution, there is no problem of memory allocation. Therefore, the program works faster. Whereas, in case of dynamic memory allocation, Neatly see here, memory is allocated during the execution, after compilation, meaning during the execution memory is allocated. So, when memory is allocated during execution, for the allocation of memory, a small amount of time is required. Hence, the program becomes a little slow. Not very slow, but little slow. Memory is allocated only once. In case of static memory allocation, memory is allocated only once. Whereas, in dynamic memory allocation, Memory is allocated many times. Next, uh, already we have seen this. In static memory allocation, memory allocation should be continuous. Whereas in dynamic memory allocation, memory allocation is not continuous. Very important. In static memory allocation, there may be wastage or shortage of memory. Why? Because it is difficult to predict the exact memory requirement before the execution. See, before executing the program, you have to allocate the memory. How much memory we have to predict? We have to assume, might be I require this much of memory. So, that prediction of exact memory requirement is very difficult. Therefore, whenever memory is allocated, there may be shortage or there may be wastage of memory. In case of dynamic memory allocation, there is no possibility of wastage or shortage of memory because whenever we require memory, we take Wherever we don't require, we return. Therefore, within the bracket, see here, because memory is allocated whenever it is needed and memory is deallocated whenever not needed. Very good. This is another point. Next, insertion and deletion may take some time as it requires shifting of elements. In case of static memory allocation, whenever you insert an element, uh, many other elements may have to be shifted or deleting an element, many other elements have to be shifted. That requires small amount of time. Whereas, in case of dynamic memory location, insertion deletion is fast as it requires changes in one or two addresses. So, how to insert an element? You just change one or two addresses. Yes, you can insert a new element. Deletion also, just one or two addresses if you change, deletion happens. Next, static memory location, it is searching is fast because you can apply binary search. Whereas dynamic memory location, always you have to do linear search. You cannot apply binary search, therefore searching is slow. Searching is slow as binary search cannot be used, cannot be applied. Next, already we have seen this. 
static memory allocation in tier 4 8 bytes of memory is allocated for the array a and here memory is allocated only once whereas to store the same four elements in a single linked list we require 16 bytes we have seen this because one node requires four bytes two for the integer another two for the addresses and for four elements we require four nodes and hence 16 bytes here more memory is required because not only we store the element but also we store the address of the next element therefore dynamic memory allocation requires more memory than static memory allocation and last point static memory allocation programming is very easy very simple dynamic uh, memory allocation also programming is uh, simple it is not that easy because you have to uh, actually take memory whenever required you have to return memory whenever required all these should happen during the execution therefore programming is not easy i am not using the word difficult but it is not as easy as in the case of static memory allocation so this is a comparison between static memory allocation and dynamic memory allocation it is very simple very straightforward